going on. A lot of people, a lot of things are open. Yeah, but we ain't in California anymore. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Good everybody, my name is Imani, my birthday is March 25th, and I'm going to tell you about my trip to Mexico. That's where we're headed, to immigration, to verify all this stuff. With the flag, it's so cute and festive. Not even gonna lie. I wish at the San Jose Airport or the San Francisco Airport we had like California flag. That would be good. So this year in January, I did buy a ticket to Mexico. I was at work and I saw a guy who looked like one of my friends. Turns out this guy didn't even speak English. Um, he did tell me that he was from Mexico and he didn't understand English, and I just apologized and walked away embarrassed. <laughs> But I did call my friend the next day, or that same day, and I was like, oh my god, I saw someone who looks just like you. But well, long story short, my friend says, hey, I live in Mexico, you should come out here. And I was like, bro, why? <laughs> nah. So, I bought my ticket to Mexico. The first night was in Cancun. The second night was in Tulum. But then I also did visit Isla Mujeres. Now, Isla Mujeres is a whole... We're gonna get to that. So for me, I've never left the country. I bought myself a passport for my birthday one year. 2021 was the year I got my first stamp. <laughs> when I was editing, I realized that the audio was there, but the visual had paused. So I re-recorded the story. But I did add some details that did happen in the story that I did forget the first time. And you'll notice that my hair is different. Don't mind that, mind your business, just enjoy the story. I also did purchase, book, whatever, a rental car before I got there. So when I booked my hotel, I also booked a rental car because I was staying in Cancun for a couple days and Tulum in another couple days and they're about an hour and a half apart. So I was gonna need that ride. I'm over here looking at how to get out of the airport, but I'm trying to get to the rental car. I'm calling my friend and I just hear music in the back because he's already made it outside. Linking up with my friend, he's got two overflowing margaritas in his hand, like ready to turn up. And he's like, hey, welcome. Like, I love his energy. I loved it and everything. But at the same time, like we're over here supposed to be picking up a rental car. What we gonna do with two open margaritas? So I'm hesitant to take the cup, but I'm juiced to see him. But in Spanish, the drivers and like the people who work around the airport, they're telling him to tell me like, it's okay, she can enjoy her drink, yada, yada, yada. My Americanized ass is, who's gonna do the driving if we got two margaritas? But clearly, I was the only one concerned about that part. All good, we get to, it's not even all good. We get to the rental car place, they wanna charge me like $300 more, even though I already paid ahead of time. This is gonna be a reoccurring event that you'll hear about, but long story short, I didn't get the rental. I just canceled it and everything. And we ended up getting a rental through, I don't even know what, there's people outside, they're like, hey, do you want a rental? And eventually, we needed a car, so we got the rental. We stayed at this hotel in Cancun. It was so beautiful. There was private beaches, private pools, um, open bars, the food was all included. Like, it was beautiful and I loved it and it was cute. This is where we're staying for the first night. So, go to sleep, we wake up, we're on day one. Like my friend is ready to attack the open bar as if we weren't just there last night. But they also had like a buffet style, like breakfast and everything was included. So they had like a buffet of food. Good morning Tulum. It is the first morning waking up in Tulum. Sorry, eating my food, but honestly, I'm gonna have a full right now. Mm. 
The beach is clutch. The beach is open just for our hotel. There are these big ass birds who keep coming over here. But it is so beautiful here and it's only like 8 o'clock in the morning. I love it. I love how relaxed and peaceful it is. We get our breakfast, we get our drinks, our mimosas, whatever we was drinking that morning. Then we head out to the beach. We headed out to the beach pretty early. Um, there was like no one else on the beach, so it felt like we had the whole beach to ourselves. We were walking along the beach so long that like, it took us hours to even do the walk. And by then people started coming out, the beach started to become more populated with other people who were from the hotel. While we were at the beach living our best life, we decided like, okay, I need to go get some pestles so I can go shopping, so we can like buy things. As we're walking to the ATM, we're on the sidewalk and my leg starts burning and I'm like, okay, did I get a rash? Is my is Are my clothes like rubbing against me? Like, I know my legs chafe a little bit, but I didn't know why they were burning. And I had on shorts, I was like lifting my shorts, trying to get some air on them. And then eventually it was burning so bad, I just took my shorts off. I was like, oh my God, I cannot stand this. I don't know if it's the material rubbing against my skin, but I cannot stand this. Turns out I had a huge jellyfish sting on me. Like you can see the tentacle going from like wrapped around my thigh. It was like welted, it was red, it was itchy, it was so uncomfortable. And we were on our way to find an ATM for me to do like a currency exchange, like oh, this totally interrupted our mission. But as we're walking, we see a pharmacia. And we're like, okay, like we're about to run in there. We go in there and my friend tells the guy like, hey, she was stung by a jellyfish. And then the pharmacy guy recommends like some cream. But this is a cream that we got in Mexico. I believe it's like baby rash cream or something, but it was working, like it was working. It was subsiding the itch the burn, everything, it was working. So shout out to the Mexico pharmacias because they saved your girl. Um, so I was rubbing that on my leg for like two, three days because it was, it did not feel good. I did get stung by a jellyfish, but it's fine. I'm getting it situated. I got my cream from the pharmacia. And this is where we're at right now. I'm waiting on my mimosa. I just finished my food. But this is the move for the moment. It's my motherfucking birthday! Just picked up my rental. Couldn't have done it alone, but just got it. Now we going from our first hotel to the second hotel. Actually, we're stopping by to take a little pit stop and then we're gonna go. Everybody loves me. Everybody loves me. So from Cancun to Tulum is about an hour and 40 minutes. It's an easy drive, but it's like, who wants to drive that far? But that's where my hotel was, so it was what it was. After finally getting our snacks, that took forever. When we got to the hotel, we pulled up. It's dark by now. So while I am inside about to pay for the hotel, I already paid prior, but like to check into the hotel and everything, uh, my friend went to the car to go grab some things. As I'm walking to the car to grab my things, I see a police officer outside. And I'm like, uh oh, what the heck is going on? At the same time, I couldn't get too close to the police officer. But as the police officer is talking to my friend, I'm trying to figure out what is going on. Like, what's the problem? What did we do? Like, what did we do? And the police officer is talking super duper fast, like super fast, where my American self 
does not have time to translate in my head and he's not trying to slow down for me to understand apparently it was a one-way street so we were supposed to be facing the opposite direction the police officer wanted to rip our license plate off I guess that's their way of giving a ticket like instead of physically writing a ticket like expect something in the mail they rip your license plate off and I guess you have to go back and get it but I'm a tourist so I don't have time to go to court or whatever the case is to go get my license plate and I can't return the car without a license plate so my friend is going back and forth so as my friend is going back and forth with this police officer I have yet to check in now the guy who was checking me in at the hotel is outside getting in the mix of the police officer and my friend. Um, there was a lot more to it, like my friend had my bag and I didn't want the pl police officer to take my bag. Um, I also did not want the police officer to search the car, like there was a lot going on. Not even to mention, I had class in less than 30 minutes from when the police officer pulled up. Like I had to be on Zoom with my class to do a presentation. There was a lot going on in a small period of time, you know? In my mind, I'm thinking, what can we do? Can we give this officer money? Like, what does he want? What can we do for him to leave us alone? But my friend notices that the police officer doesn't have a gun, and many of the police officers in Mexico did have a gun, so he's not as pressed as I was. Like, he wasn't as, like, stressed about the situation. But whatever, I'm also the tourist, I don't really know what's going on, and I just need the vehicle okay, I need my friend to come with me, and I just need to make it to class on time. The cop leaves, my friend has to take the car somewhere. And then as I'm checking in, the guy, he's like asking for ID, he's asking for this, he's asking for that. And I paid for everything in advance before I got there. Why is he asking me for like another $180? But then he said it in pesos and I was like, oh, do you take car? And he's like, no, I only take cash. And I'm like, I already paid. You're asking for more money. You don't take debit. You only take cash. I'll bring it to you tomorrow. You know where I'm going to be. I'm not going to run away. You know where I'm staying. I'll bring it to you tomorrow. And he's like, oh yeah, that's fine. I just thought it was super sad. Mind you, I'm also thinking, I have class. Like, we just got to Tulum. It's dark. I have to be in class. And my teacher knows I'm in another country, but I was still in school. Like, I was just taking classes because I also have a business of my own. So I was taking business courses to help me manage my business. Like, we make it inside the hotel. I'm turning on the camera. I'm turning on everything. But at the same time, I didn't have time to change. So I'm still, like, in a bathing suit from being on the beach earlier that day. But at this point, I don't even care about changing, like, I need to get on the Zoom call. And then when we were presenting, like, I was very vocal. I mean, like, I wasn't neglecting the presentation just because I was on vacation. And I was answering people's questions, so I was very much involved. After our presentation, I turned off the camera. I turned the mute button on, and I was enjoying my vacation. I was in the pool, enjoying some party favors. Like, we getting lit. So that did make me feel good after, like, the long day we had, the long drive, the police issue, trying to make it to class, like, it was all situated like i had to remind myself that i'm on vacation i should be relaxing i should be enjoying my time but yeah the hotel was beautiful like it was the inside was black we had two balconies like it was just Oh yeah, I said I was gonna write a book and leave it here. Peep it, peep it. <laughs> Good morning, Grand Rising. It has been beautiful nonetheless. It has been stressful as well, but where is it not? But happy motherfucking 27th birthday to me. I love this neighborhood. So day three comes around and we are actually headed to an island. I told my friend that I wanted to be on a boat. So this was his day that he basically set up. I wanted to do a birthday bash situation. I don't know. I just wanted to be on a boat for my birthday. So my friend, he booked this situation. He's like, we're gonna go to Isla Mujeres. Tourists go there, it's just an island. Um, 
hella bars, hella food, but people also live on the island. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, this day I'm just going with the flow. My friend invites his friend who lives in Cancun and was like, hey, we're going to Isas Mujeres. Like, do you want to come? And he's like, yeah, let's go. And I'm like, cool. Um, so we drive from Tulum back to Cancun to take the boat from Cancun to Isla Mujeres. It's like, if we were gonna do that, why didn't we already do that when we were in Cancun versus going to Tulum to go back to Cancun to take that trip? I love my friend regardless. <laughs> we get to Cancun and basically they're buying the tickets for the boat. There's three of us, we gotta buy three tickets. And I didn't really know what to expect. Okay, so they're like walking us from where we bought the ticket to where the boat is. And as we're walking, I'm vlogging, as you guys can see. But then the lady offers to take our pictures. So I put my camera away, we take some pictures. She's like, okay, now take off your mask, now do this. Like, we're taking a couple pictures, like it was cute. Why have I never seen those pictures? I asked my friend who lives in Mexico if he can find them. He has never seen those pictures. What was the pictures for? Don't know. So he's walking us to the boat, we get in the boat. This is not a private boat. This is a boat with like 15 other people on it. So I'm like, okay, like, it's cool. Like, we gotta turn up at the island then. Like, it's not a big deal. We get on the boat, it's cool. The thing is, the boat driver, captain of the boat, don't really know what it's called, but the driver of the boat, like, was kind of like emceeing. He didn't say anything in English. He was talking, he was hyping up everybody in Spanish, which was a little weird to me because when I was in Hawaii they was hyping up everybody in English and Japanese and a third language like because they knew that tourists were gonna be on this trip tourists were gonna be on the boat the shuttle the whatever that they were ready to translate but this entire boat right like no one spoke English it was like a little uncomfortable because it was just like are you just gonna be ignoring the tourists that are on the boat and like like what's good but it, it was like whatever what got what irked me was when we were driving there, we were taking the boat from Cancun to Isla Mujeres. Why did the boat stop in the middle of the ocean? Girl. I'm looking at my friend, I'm like, what's going on? And he already sees that I'm annoyed. I've been sitting there annoyed because there's a whole lot going on and I feel like my presence is being dismissed. And he's like, oh, it's no problem. We're just having motor issues, is what my friend is telling me. Like the boat is just having motor issues. And I'm like, no problem we're just having motor issues like we're in the middle of the ocean what do you mean it's no problem but they're like figuring out but we're just kind of like floating in like one spot and sometimes there's like huge waves coming over but like for the most part we're like floating in one spot so I was just like oh my god I was kind of irritated because I'm like this was supposed to be like a 20 25 minute boat ride and then time goes by they fix the situation and we're we're moving again so then they're bumping music you got the MC going, people are smoking a cigarette even though there's pregnant people on the boat. Like, there was, there was a lot going on. Then, the boat stops again. I'm like, bruh. And we paid like $200 to get from Cancun to the island. And I'm like, if we pay $200, what is everybody's money going towards if y'all not fixing the boat, if y'all got motor issues? This second issue was that they ran out of oil, like gas or something. And I'm like, how do you run out of gas? Like, I know how you run out of gas, obviously. But it's like, when you prepare to take a whole bunch of people somewhere, like you don't check to see your gas tank is full. So it was really awkward and like frustrating and I'm hot, so there's that. And basically we're just chilling in the ocean again, waiting for somebody to bring us gas. And at this point I'm like, can they take me back to Cancun? Cause like, I'm thinking like, if we stuck twice in the ocean on our way to Isla Mujeres, what, what is the ride gonna be like on the way back? So I'm asking my friend like, hey, can I just get on the other boat? Cause like there's two boats that already came to us like, and they going back to Cancun, like let me go too. But he was like, no, no, you're gonna be fine. We get to Isla Mujeres and it's lit. Like music is playing, people are already drunk. Like it's lit, it's like the Vegas Strip but in Mexico. And I'm trying to like find a ride back because I'm like, this doesn't feel like a safe ride back. And he's like, nah, just stay. And I'm like trying to find a boat, a ferry. He's like kind of helping me, but I'm like, nah, like enjoy your time. Like we're already on the island. Um, they said that they're gonna pick us up in like three hours. Like enjoy your time here. I'm just 
you know, I'm gonna do my thing. And I'm like, I'm a solo traveler. Like, I don't mind the situation. Like, if I'm uncomfortable, I don't wanna make everyone else uncomfortable. Or if, like, if I feel some type of way, like, I don't want everyone else to feel some type of way. Like, I'll meet y'all back at the car and I'll, like, do whatever. Like, I'll get into something in Cancun or whatever the case is. But I didn't even end up doing that. I ended up staying on the island and kind of, like, shopping around. Um, taking shots and eating and just enjoying my time on the island until it was time to go back. Why could I not find the boat or the dock where we docked the boat to go back? Like there's so many docks on the island, but I couldn't, I guess I was standing at the wrong one because the boat done left me. The boat has left me. So not only was I freaking out about the ride over that kept stopping in the ocean now the boat has left me on the island love that so like not even a lie like part of me was kind of freaking out like oh my god i'm on an island and my car is in cancun which is about an hour and 40 minutes from my hotel how am i gonna get off this island where the heck is my car i'm saying it's in cancun but where in cancun like <laughs> I didn't drive there, my friend drove there, but I have the car keys, so it's not like they can leave. That's why I also was trying to get back, because I'm like, okay, like let me just hang around Cancun until my friends come back. So I'm walking around, I'm buying a ticket from Isla Mujeres to Cancun, but mind you, I don't know where my car is, so any boat that takes me back to Cancun, they're taking me back to the boat stop, like, or whatever stop. They're not taking me to my car. So that was my dilemma there. So I waited on the island for maybe like 40 minutes to an hour. And then I got on this huge ferry, which was like a jet ski ferry boat kind of thing. And it drove us back to Cancun. I got back to Cancun, but I did not know where I was. I was nowhere, nowhere, nowhere near my car. I looked and I was like, this is nowhere near my car. So I'm like on this island and trying to figure out where I'm going. I'm asking for help. Girl, I took a bus. I got in the car with a stranger, I took a bike, all just to find my car, which is where my friends were waiting. I didn't even know they were waiting for me. Even though me and my friends, we split ways, I had my friend's number and I had my friend's Instagram because we were talking a lot on Instagram and like the Instagram video chat. He was with his other friend who had a phone, but he didn't give me that friend's phone number. And yeah, so I took this boat back. I'm trying to find someone. There's this girl who's trying to find the mall and she sees me in distress. I'm trying to help her because I was translating from English to Spanish so she can ask the guy how to get to the mall and all these other questions. And she's like, well, where are you trying to go? And I'm like, I'm trying to find my car, which is like somewhere in Cancun. And she's like, oh, I'll help you find it. So yes, I got in a car with a stranger. Um, she was from New York and she was super nice. She was just, she was also kind of solo traveling. She invited a friend, but then the friend went back to California. So she was just like, oh, I might go to like Europe after this. Like she was super chill. I also took like public transportation. I took the bus in Mexico. Like I was taking all sorts of transportation where it was just like, what more can I lose? I need to get to my car before the sun sets so I can get back to my hotel. Like y'all see the situ situation I was in. She takes me, I get in her car, we're chopping it up. We're getting to know each other. And then we pull up to where my car is. And my friends are like standing outside, like just waiting for me, I guess. And I was like, oh my God, girl, I'm so thankful for you. I'm trying to like pay her a vessel so she can go shopping. So she's about to go to the mall. She's like, no, keep it. I'm like, I have USD if you want some cash. And she's like, nah, keep it. And I was like, all right, well, blessings to you. You are a lifesaver. I hope you have an amazing trip. And we kind of like parted ways from there. When I got in the car with my friend, I was like low key annoyed because they didn't like reach out to me. But it was like, whatever, like you can't really be that mad when you're on vacation. At least I can't be that mad when I'm on vacation. I'm just like, it is what it is. Like everyone's safe, like we here. It was a crazy experience, not gonna lie. And I was a little frustrated, I was a little funky. And if my friends felt some type of way because I had an attitude, it would be completely understandable. But they really didn't. My friend was like really understanding and everything. Um, super chill, love my friend to death. Whoa, this one smells good. Smells like bacon. This one smells like bacon. Okay, let's cross the street. And then there's the stray dogs. Yeah. The dogs are like trying to find some food to scrap. I 
A pizza? <laughs> That's so random. That's where we have that meat right there? Yeah. We had the pastor. Tacos y torta. Pastor. No, we just had right now. That was bomb. Yeah. That's all pastor. Go Let's go that way. All the way. All the ways. Don't get hit by a scooter. Today is Saturday. There's more people yesterday. Yeah, you would think there's more people on Saturday? Yeah, and let's start playing basketball. Friday night, this place was pop. Marquisitas, what is that? Oh, crazy. Crazy. Like if you run out of ingredients, you can just go next door. Have you had a have you had a elote? You like corn? Oh yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, we had those. Let's have this is where I got my churro yesterday. Right here? Yeah. And then I saw the and sausage. Yeah. Their sauce is even better. They have a gazebo. A playground. This place is a hella clutch. I think you'd be all my and many the parties. She's like on the the last day okay so we have one more day in mexico the last day we're in tulum and my friend's like oh let's go to this beach that i found i was like all right cool found a little beach in tulum and i'm like i love this like i honestly felt like we should have stayed on that beach for most of the trip because there's so much to do in tulum that we didn't really get to explore but they had like beaches, boats, restaurants on the beach, like everything that I wanted to do was basically in Tulum. Like it was just beautiful. I loved it. Like I loved that part of Tulum. I loved that part of Mexico. Like I was also taco hopping. I'm from San Jose in California and it's predominantly Hispanic, not gonna lie. We are very diverse, but where I live is predominantly Hispanic. And we have some bomb tacos, like taco trucks and taquerias, but taco trucks then taquerias. If a place says taco shop, I'm not eating there. In Mexico, they have so many different kinds of tacos. I'm like, okay, let me see what y'all got. So I was trying to compare it to San Jose, see like what it was. And yeah, so I was on the hunt for some bomb ass tacos. My thighs were sore. There's not really like solid roads. We're like biking through dirt. There's like no one really stopping for pedestrians. When I was driving, I stopped for to let pedestrians cross. And the police officers behind me were honking at me to go. And I'm like, do pedestrians not have the right of way? And then my friend's like, well, they do when you're taking the test, but like no one really gives them the right of way. And I was like, it was just our last day, so I was enjoying it. As we're on the beach, I'm like, hey, watch your step, there's a huge rock right there. I bang my foot into this huge rock as I'm looking over at my friend, and I'm like, oh my goodness. My friend's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, it's fine. We gonna, we gonna ride it out. And as I'm saying, like, it's fine, let's go. I'm the only one not moving. I'm like, it's fine. Like, it really hurt. It really hurt. I'm thinking, like, I stubbed my toe. Like, you hit the corner of a table or, like, the corner of the couch. Like, you stub your toe. It's time to go home. It's time to drive from Tulum back to Cancun to go to the airport. We're, like, heading back. And my foot still hurts. I'm super nervous because I have to go through immigration again. I have to go check in my bag again. And now my foot hurts. But honestly, like all that standing is hurting. Like I am like in so much pain. I'm sitting at this point. But I'm in so much pain and they're asking us to like move. They're asking like there's a lot going on that like someone was like, do you need a wheelchair? And I was like, no, like I'm fine. I just like stub my toe, whatever. But I'm walking so slow and I'm like leaning on everything that someone's like, I think you need a wheelchair. Because as they're making me walk faster, I'm in pain. Eventually they bring me this wheelchair and I'm just like Thank you guys, you guys are so sweet. I would have never asked for this. But it relieved like so much pressure on my foot because I was just standing on it. And I'm thinking, again, I stubbed my toe. 
as the pain gets worse as I'm waiting for my flight, I'm on the phone with Kaiser. <laughs> I'm on the phone with Kaiser like, I'm in Mexico, my toe hurts, I think I stubbed my toe. I was in a boot for like a month and I was sent home from work for a while because they didn't like that I was working with a boot and crutches. Like it was just a whole ordeal. But overall, I loved my trip to Mexico. It was super fun, it was super relaxing. Like the beaches were dope, the open bar was dope. The people are nice as long as you're not trying to buy anything. They, that's when they try to finesse you once they find out you're not from there. But like I loved it, I definitely would go back. I'm looking forward to going back. And yeah, I have a lot of things that I want to do that I didn't get to do that I'm planning on doing when I go back. So that was my trip in Mexico. I had such a good time despite all the things that happened. I just wanted to put them in the story of like what ha the big things that happened. But overall, it was a really good time. I got a cake on my birthday. It was just so beautiful, so nice, and I can't wait to go back. Did you grab the tuna? Yeah. I'm looking for those ones for like water. <laughs> they had tuna right next to it. They already knew what you were thinking.